In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I made this render step by step, showing my full workflow, and you might learn some techniques you've never seen before. I won't be hiding any of the mistakes I made in this video and give you a full look on how I made this. From the start, I knew I want to create a realistic forest scene. How do I make that look good though? That's where reference comes in handy. I searched up different images of forests and decided that I liked the look of the road going through the trees with pools of light hitting the asphalt. Cliche, I know, but it's a start. By the way, a great place to look for stock footage is websites like Pixabay, Unsplash, and Pexels. All links in the description. With these reference photos, I was looking for specific details that I might brush over when making this in Blender for extra realism. An example of this would be grabbing photos of just the edge of the road to see how the grass and the ditch forms around the pavement and how the pavement cracks. These details are what really push a render to realism. I put all these images into a free reference board software, PureRef, link in the description and sorted my images into different categories. One for the composition and layout of the image, one for the lighting and some other small details. Going into Blender, I can have my PureRef open in another monitor, or if you have one monitor, you can actually lock it to your screen so it doesn't disappear when you're using Blender by pressing Ctrl Shift A or hovering over it and clicking the middle option. Finally, going into Blender, I'm gonna start with my road. Get the shape down really quick so I can get the camera angle I want. I know I want it to be on the side of the road and the road leading across the image following the rule of thirds. I converted this path into a mesh and then duplicated it to make the ground by scaling it on the X axis. Making sure to flatten the sides by going into edit mode, selecting your edge loop and pressing S, X, 0. Can't have a forest without some trees. I used a sapling tree gen add-on to make my trees. This add-on is pretty finicky and did get annoying, but if you know how to use it, you can get some pretty good results. I used this tutorial to make my pine trees. Let's add some textures now. For the trunk, I used a bark texture from the Quixel Bridge Megascans library with over 18,000 free assets to choose from. I also grabbed this mossy forest ground texture and two different types of road textures, one smooth and one rough. Later, I'm going to show you how I combine these two to make the ultimate texture. I added a particle system to my ground and set the emitter type to hair. Under the render tab in your particle settings, make sure you have collection selected and select the collection you put all your trees in. Now for the road. Oh my gee jolly was this a hassle. This road is warping and turning and being weirdly curvy and when I unwrap the UV, nothing lines up. I tried it all, moving each vertice on the UV map to make it line up just for it to look like trash. However, there is a much easier method. Choose a side on your road to add a seam by holding alt and clicking on the edge, then right clicking and selecting mark seam. Now press A to select everything and U to unwrap. Not Q project or cylinder project, just unwrap. Okay, now this is the crazy part. I thought this feature was only available to the rich, the top of the hierarchy, the almighty, but no. We can do it for free. What we're going to do is turn this windy, warping, weird UV into a beautiful, straight rectangle. Go to the middle of your UV island and find a face that looks mostly square. Now select the left edge of your face and press S, X, 0. If it flattens the edge, then do S, Y, 0. Do this for each side to make it a perfect rectangle. Then select everything and type the command follow active quads. Comment down below if you didn't know this before. Or if you did, then thank you for pushing through. I got so excited when I found this out. Let's create that epic road texture I was talking about earlier. We're going to bring in both textures into our shader, either by pressing Ctrl Shift T on our principal BSDF and navigating to where we saved our texture. This only works if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, by the way. Or by using the built-in add-on in Quixel Bridge to export directly to Blender. P.S. If you have the issue of Quixelbridge not being able to export into Blender's newer versions, it's because Quixelbridge doesn't support Blender versions past 3.7. There is a fix to this though. Click on this link in the description and the first comment has a solution. Back to the shader. Once you have both textures set up, then we're going to make both of these textures into a group by selecting it and then pressing Ctrl G. Then name this group Smooth and the other one Rough. Now with our super organized setup, we're going to run these both into a mix shader with a noise texture controlling the factor. To see what our noise texture is doing, put it through a color ramp and hold Control shift when clicking on it. The black areas will be the top texture and the white areas will be the bottom. In other words, the more I slide the black to the right, the more rough my road gets. And there we have it. Epic stuff. This next step made Blender crash so many times. I'm going to add some more plants to the scene with another particle system. Every time I add a new particle system, I make sure the last one is in a collection that's hidden in the viewport. To do this, go to your outliner on the right and click the filter that looks like a TV. Now you can disable it on your tree collection. 
For the grass and the bushes, I used this free G-Scatter add-on by Grasswald. Blender's viewport got super slow when using the built-in scattering tool though, so I just brought in the assets manually and used a particle system to spread it around, making sure it's only covering the parts the camera sees. No need to put grass behind the camera if it's never going to be seen. And for that surreal fog you saw in the final render, I used a cube that went over the ground of my whole scene and used a principal volume shader with a gradient texture to create this effect. Ducky 3D has a great tutorial on this effect. Okay, I got a super cool winding road that travels into the sky and looks like it's from the movie Inception, but I'm still missing something. What's the story of this render? Why is the road warping? Easiest way to add a story is through a character. What's a road without a vehicle driving on it? Found this amazing 3D model on Sketchfab for free and made it drive down the road for a little animation. Why is this RV driving away though? That's where the alien spider came in. Another free animated model on Sketchfab. Got lucky with this one. Now we have a huge monster seemingly chasing down this RV, and maybe this huge spider is the cause of the warping road. It's up to imagination. The amount of times Blender crashed in the making of this video is too many to count on my hands. However, I prioritize optimizing over everything in this project to ensure I could finish the project without blaming my art on my PC. By putting everything into collections to easily be hidden, setting high poly models to display as bounds, and turning on the simplify checkbox to turn off child particles and limit resolution, I could finish this render without Blender crashing. 8 out of 10 success rate. There's still one thing that made this render stand out from just an ordinary picture, and that's the composition. This was the missing piece in the puzzle to mastery. Quick tip. Go into your camera settings after selecting your camera and turn on thirds in your composition guides under viewport display. This next part is what drained all the energy out of me. And unfortunately, without this step, achieving the render you truly want comes close to impossible. What felt like a majority of time spent on this project was tweaking the lighting, waiting for a render, changing it again, and repeating this process until I realized it's past my bedtime. Just changing the HDR in your scene can change the entire mood of your image. I learned so many valuable skills while making this project, and I hope you did too. But it's all useless if every time you try to render, Blender crashes. Click here to see how I optimize render times up to 60 times the speed.